the dumbest person in the room. All right. Oh, okay. Someone wanted the camera in Auburn and two cameras. All right. Oh, the camera loggers. That's right. On this job, we deal with a lot of. That came harsh that one. On this job, we deal with all types of camera loggers. Um, and uh, one time we were in a situation uh, at St. Mike's uh, where uh, there are a few especially uh, uh, gene pool limited uh, people. And, um, and so, uh, you know, I mean, on, the, on this job, like, on, like, like, you have to know, I don't know what you think of me now, but, but I honestly, like, in, with a patient, I am respectful, I am obvious, you know, I am, I'm, like offering everything. Like, oh, geez. oh yes. Oh no, sir. Really? I know. I completely understand you. You had gone grocery shopping, farmer's market. And you had come home. You had taken a shower. You sat down quickly. You didn't realize you left a carrot on the couch. I, I totally understand. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that happens all the time. Uh, well, it might be two carrots. Okay. <laughs> Accidents happen. Try to <laughs> Related impalements. They're very common. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm not there to judge, right? I'm there to take them to the hospital. So, so to the patient, you know, we're always ultimately respectful, but as soon as uh, you know they're out of earshot, there's a lot of like, you should hear the dumbass I just brought in. My God. So here are two people. You tell me which one you think will win a Darwin Award one day. Alright, so. So uh, the first one was uh, in his car, drunk, and uh, he is uh, driving along. And as he runs through a red light, he sees that there's a cop right there at the intersection. And the cop sees him. He sees the cop. The cop sees him. He sees the cop saw him. He's run a red light. So what does he do? But make a left hand turn through the right onto a one way street going the wrong way. <laughs> Clearly, in a in an attempt to evade the police. He goes down the street, he finds his way to an alley, he pulls into the alley, he uh, thinks he'll ditch the cop this way, he smashes into a pole, wrenches the end around, throws it into reverse, smashes into the police car, <laughs> and then the police find him seat belted in the driver's seat yelling, I was just a passenger! The driver ran away! I was just a passenger! <laughs> <laughs> the crew puts him on a backboard, they take him to the hospital. Okay, sir. Uh, he sticks to his story. I was a passenger! <laughs> he continues just yelling obscenities to the police and anyone else who walks by. <laughs> my patient... <laughs> my patient was riding on a truck with a friend. And he sticks his head out of the window. And he is... Uh, there's a, a sporting event that I don't need to identify. Whatever. Anyway, anyway and, so, uh, and so he's doing one of those, you know, up and down Young Street, woo! Things as he's standing, hanging out of the truck. And he's basically standing, and he manages to clip his head on a uh, metal street sign. He collapses. <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah, we arrive, he's GCS 9. GCS 9, uh, what that means is that he can't be awoken for, by any means. We get calls all the time from people who are unconscious. Very few people deserve to be called unconscious. Generally, it's called sleeping. <laughs> uh, and sleeping, uh, generally, we think of it as being a therapeutic experience. Uh, but, uh, in this case, um, not so much. And so, uh, so yes, yeah, so we can't wake him uh, by any means. He's lying there. The top of his head has been scalped off. Essentially, looks like like a like a toupee blowing off. The <laughs> and, so, and so, because uh, you know he's very in, you know he's in very bad shape, and uh, you know we throw him on a backboard as well, and we bring him into the hospital, and uh, at the hospital. Now, I bring him into St. Mike's, and the thing about St. Mike's is, it's a wonderful hospital, my station is, close, is very close to St. Mike's, we're there all the time, it's a great hospital, I love it, but, unfortunately, like, they are a fantastic trauma hospital, they deal with every super major trauma that happens south of Eglinton, anything north of Eglinton, goes to Sunnybrook, 
they uh, have you know a helicopter pad. They take in trailers from all over Ontario. Every you know every gun shop in the club, club district goes there. Every major car accident. They're also a stroke center, so they take in you know lots of the stroke people. They take in the worst of the worst, the baddest of the bad. They used to be a major burn unit for some reason. We don't call them a burn unit. Apparently, they have lots of burns anyway. And. Um, well, they do the worst of the worst. They're also located right at Queen and Young, uh, and so they're in the heart of the homeless shelter district and the club district. And so they really see the span of uh, uh, socioeconomic alcoholism, and um, <laughs> and uh, they deal with so much bullshit. And uh, so, the, so the bottom line is that they have this uh, bizarre juxtaposition of dealing with the worst of the worst and the worst of the worst, and. Um, and they're not easily impressed. So, so this guy that I brought in, who I think is in pretty bad shape, and so we bring him in, and they're just like, yeah, okay, he lopped the top of his head off, and. <laughs> and I'm like, well, I guess there's not much more to that story. <laughs> I guess high cholesterol. <laughs> and so, so anyway, so they're quite unimpressed, and I'm getting uh, you know nothing but sort of like you know disrespect from the uh, you know woman on triage at the time, and uh, until and so she's trying to show me because at the time he couldn't be woken up, but by the time we got to the hospital he was talking, he was yelling, he was complaining, he was flopping his, his you know pseudo yarmulke around. <laughs> And so, uh, and so really, like, he just does not look as bad as he used to be. Now he just looks like a man who had a, a, a poor, you know, hair cutting experience. <laughs> Until the nurse says to him, in an, in an effort to show me just how, you know, together he really is, she says to me, she says to him, rather, you know, are you, you know, I'll alert to person, place, and time. It's a very common thing we ask, you know, do you know who you are, do you know where you are, do you know approximately what time it is. It's so funny, sometimes we'll whittle that down to, do you know if it's winter? <laughs> and so, you know, so she's, you know, do you know your name? He says his name. Do you know where you are? And he says, yeah, I'm shingling. <laughs> We're like, shingling. And, you know, a few things go through my mind. For some bizarre Freudian reason, the first thing that goes through my mind is that it has something to do with the verb act to be a single. <laughs> He's singling, shingling. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just telling you what's in my mind. You can do eight blots on me all you want. And so he says, uh, yeah, I, uh, I'm shingling. And we're looking at each other like, you're, you're shingling? He says, yeah, I'm, sh I'm shingling. I'm, I'm putting on shingle. I'm a shingler. I'm putting on things on a roof. We're like, well, where are you putting things on a roof? I'm I'm shingling a roof at Bayview and Eglinton. What, can't you see that? What's the matter with you? What's wrong with you? I'm putting on shingles. And so after that, we got a bed. <laughs>